Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I have with me the T14 Gen 4 Lenovo ThinkPad, as we always know and how much I love this brand. Um, that's the 7800 uh, series. Any, any of those without the copilot or whatever internally with the AI, never mind. It was, always, it was already opened, but I want to share with you the opening, so let's open it up and see what we have inside. So inside we have those things that keep the environment safe, and here we have the device. Anything else inside? Yeah, the charger. Let's get off the charger. And here we have the device. Before getting to the device, let's see what kind of charger we are getting. Oh, how nice of you, Lenovo. Thank you. So finally, after four generations, finally, Lenovo are giving away the faster charger for the Ryzen CPU um, type of um, laptops. What I mean by that? So normally, with the Intel or the Ryzen for the T-Series, you would get the normal uh, the Type-C charger, which is normally charges at uh, 65 and watts, but normally. But here we are getting the smaller one, but also the ones that charging rapidly. It's the better version, so good for you, Lenovo. Thank you. Before opening it, let's see what kind of ports this device is offering us. So let's start from the right side. On the right, we are getting an optional smart card reader, fan exhaust, USB 3.2, anyways, super fast char, uh, super um, fast USB, Kensington lock. On the back, we are getting an optional one connectivity. On the left, we are getting the whole party. On the left, we have network connectivity. Yeah, you hear that full RJ45, two charging ports. I mean, it's not a charging port, it's a Type-C, <laughs> Thunderbolt Type-C um, Gen 4, a full HDMI, another USB, and auxiliary port for you people who are still using old headphones. On the front, we have basically nothing. Anyways, so usually what uh, differentiate the, the between the Intel and the Ryzen usually are the things that coming with your device. What I mean by that? So the optional one is still optional, right? But usually on the Intel, you would get in the devices with the, the card reader. On this one, it's still optional. But I think that the most, like it's coming basically on the Intel, is the face recognition. It does not come with the Ryzen CPUs, which is kind of a bummer because I prefer the Ryzen CPUs over the Intels for a while now. They are much better, much efficiently, have much more um, power in them, better devices overall. All right, let's talk specs a little bit. So the display resolution is 1920 by 1800 by 2000, which means it is full HD with less bezels. Less bezels means that you do not have any more that chin over here, which usually would be covered by that pen. Then you're getting more screen. I like that. Even though there is like bezels, those are not too bad. Believe me, in real life, those are really not too bad. The Full HD is Full HD. The screen is bright enough. I mean, it could be a little bit brighter, but the colors are fine. Nothing too bad, not nothing too offset. And that's all it can do. 180, no more than that. So that's about that, the screen, the display and for the keyboard. So the keyboard is actually standard keyboard from Lenovo. There isn't really anything special about it. Let's, there's something a little bit that I want, a tiny bit that I would like to add, and that's the flex of the keyboard. Now, if you look closely, you will see that there is actually a gap between the keyboard and the chassis. What it means, it means that if you have any issues with the keyboard, it would be much more easier to replace. So if, let's say, the keyboard is part of the chassis, it means you have to replace the whole top. It's much better, and, well, th th again, that's my opinion. Regarding the flex, so 
you can press on it like any other device and it's going to flex a little bit but nothing too bad let me do it from the side let me get the camera a little bit lower so you can maybe see other stuff that you would like to see nothing too bad the typing experience is great as always the FN key is still on the left on the next generation it probably will switch places Lenovo gave up apparently let me type something for you oh sorry for the caps lock <laughs> Again, wonderful keyboard, great experience. You cannot beat them. And you don't even have to mention that you have backlight key, uh, lights for the keyboard. And the trackpad. So again, the trackpad is great. I'm not, I'm not that I'm saying it a lot of times that the, key, the trackpads are great, but usually they are. This one is really, really smooth. I have a friend who explained that it feels like you're rubbing a dolphin and it's exactly what it resembles it's just battery smooth and precise wonderful to feel and wonderful to click silent which is a great great plus I hate track uh, track that are doing like noises and uh, haptic or whatever I like the old ones the normal ones and you still do get top three buttons to use with the tiny red dot from Lenovo regarding weight so the weight is about 1.4 kilograms it's not that heavy i mean not at all but it's it's, it's not a feather <laughs> i would say it that way it's not a feather it feels like more than like uh 1.5 1.6 but it's nothing too bad and you get a, a great excellent device overall and it's worth those two three four grams that you're getting with the side of the device so what about the speakers Probably mediocre, but we're going to test them together. So let me start off the sound and see the device for yourself. So, as you've heard, I'm sorry Lenovo, trash. <laughs> Even at 70% and full volume, they were still not loud enough, at least not for me. And I'm not, well, I do, I do, I, can, I barely can hear things, but <laughs> I like good sounds. I like when there is a little bit of bass, there is like something. Here is, there is basically nothing. I would say four out of ten. That's, what it, that's how much I'm giving this device. And now for the specifications, and let's start with the CPU. So the CPU is AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 7840U with Radeon 780M graphics. It means that those graphics are on, are on board. They're supposed to be a little better, but uh, we are going to check it out soon. Memory. So the device has 32 gigs of RAM. It's available for usage just 30. Sometimes it's getting different between device and stuff like that. The speed is 6400, which is quite good. And yeah, the disc is Western Digital, PC SN740, SDD QNQ D-1T00-1201. Man, those names. So it's just one terabyte, and we're going to check really soon how fast it is. Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi is Qualcomm Fast Connect, 6900 1000 sorry wi-fi 6e dual band s something we have to take it a little wider sim simultaneous dbs wi-fi 6 network adapter 
really long name for Wi-Fi adapter. We're going to check it really soon as well. And the GPU, as mentioned, the one that's on board, named the Radeon 780M. It has just one gigabyte, which is fairly nothing. But again, we are going to test it and see how much it can perform. So now I'm going to test and benchmark the SSD. Let's see how fast it is. I'm going to run the test and see how much gives are the back once we are back. And we are back with the numbers. But the write speed, this is where this device shines. So usually we'll see the write speeds at about 2,000, maximum 3,000. Almost 5,000, that's really, really nice. So good for you, SanDisk, and good for you, Lenovo, for choosing that SSD for your customers. Now, what about the Wi-Fi? Usually we're going through the uh, tests, but I want to test Wi-Fi before because it's going to be the fastest test. So I've heard that if you go to fast.com, that's going to be faster test for the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to run it and I'll be back once it has finished. And those numbers are great. I I'm not going to shut down the video. It gives me exactly one gigabyte, which is this is what Wi-Fi uh, 6E is presumably able to give out. This is great, wonderful Wi-Fi, good for you Qualcomm and, and the Novo. Again, wonderful numbers, I'm not exaggerating. You can see other videos that I did and usually we'll get numbers like that for like, um, I think about seven, seven, eighty, eight hundred, something like that. This one gave me exactly one giga. Wow, wonderful. And now for the CPU benchmarks. So I'm going to run first run it without a charger and then with a charger. I'll be back once it has finished. And we're back with the numbers. So the single core score is almost at 1100 and the multi core score is at 5200. No, look, that's, that's not a joke, but <laughs> if you compare it to the Intel version, which I do have a comparison, again, without the charger and everything, and it's still a pen with a video with a pen. <laughs> so the single core score is almost the same, but the multi core score, the Intel is losing by almost like 40, 50%. That's not a joke. Let me show you the rest of the numbers and we go again and do the CPU benchmark, but next time with the charger and see what we're getting and what differences we're getting. So now here is the charger connected and I'm going to run again the CPU benchmark and we'll see what kind of numbers we're getting. I'll be back once it has finished. And we're back with the numbers. So the single core score is at 2400. Multi core score is 10,677. Now again, sorry for having this comparison with the Intel, the 13th gen, but I, I can't ignore the fact that it's much better than the Intel. So the single core score over there is less in like 30%, I would say. No, 30, 25%. The multi core score is at almost, again, 25%. So it's not a brainer. If you have to choose between those two, if you can forgive the face recognition, you should choose with this one. Anyways, let me show you the rest of the numbers and we go to the GPU onboarding benchmarks. And now for the GPU benchmarks. So I'm going to start with the OpenCL and I'll be back once it has finished. And we're back with the numbers for the OpenCL. And the number is 26,606. Show the rest of our numbers and go to our last benchmark and now for the Vulcan benchmark I'll be back once it has finished and we are back with the numbers for our last benchmark so the Vulcan score is 31,972 nice number I mean for an onboard wonderful I'll show you the rest of the numbers and we are going to do the close-up so that was it for the T14 Gen 4 Ryzen CPU the seventh uh, series CPU. So my conclusion for you, or should I say for us about this video, 
is basically that this device, if you can get it for a fair price, I would get it. I would say, uh, also I, I got this for sixteen hundred dollars, something like that. So it's fairly cheap. So if you can get it for like a thousand, maybe a little bit more than that, you are good to go. That's a really good device. Yeah, the screen isn't like 4K or OLED, or the speakers are not great, and you are missing the face recognition. Recognition, but everything else is just wonderful. You're getting a lot of ports. You're getting great part of life for like three to four hours at least great keyboard wonderful trackpad um great um uh, charger i mean overall the overall package for the price and for the device for a 14 inch device that can perform such good uh numbers within the benchmarks i would say enjoy it buy it and yeah if you have any questions do let me know i would love to answer them and thank you for watching. I'll see you on another video.